Well, good morning, Emmanuel. Welcome to church this morning. And thank you to all of you for gathering, whether you are here in person or from our digital space. We remain connected in and through the spirit. Well, every community is a living and evolving organism of change. Change is the only constant in our lives, and today we mark a change, a transition, an ending, and a new beginning. As we worship together one last time, let us do it in celebration, celebrating the season of shared companionship while at the same time opening our spirits to the work of God, creating something new in our lives. For anyone who may be with us for the first time or new to the Emmanuel community or returning after a long while, we extend a very, very special welcome. Today we are marking the end of my ministry here at Emmanuel and a new beginning as we both continue the work of the Spirit on different paths. After our time of worship today, there will be a soup and sandwich luncheon, and all are invited. I'm not sure if we have any announcements from the community this morning, but if we do, then I would welcome that at this time. And just while Neil is coming up, um, I just want to make sure that uh, for those folks in our digital space, if you've not yet had a chance to make provisions of bread and juice, we will be communing together later in the service, so you'll want to um, take a moment to make that happen. And if anyone um, in, uh, in the sanctuary has not yet um, collected their communion elements at the back, uh, please see David and he will make sure uh, that you get those. And we weren't able to have anyone um, who is able to lead us in singing uh, make it in today. So we, the congregation, as in you, may be robust in your singing today. Um, and Neil? Well, first I will say on the topic of singing is when we got Nancy's email, we assumed somebody else would respond. And as they say, when you assume, um, what does that make about you and me? Um, for the sound people, uh, Melissa said she was willing to sing from the pulpit if that's useful at all, but she didn't want to panic you by running up during the, the uh, hymn. Is that possible, Arthur? Yeah. 
all right, they can handle Melissa's voice. So, um, and if anyone else would like to sing, you have to talk to Nancy afterwards and we can put you on the rotation. Yeah. Um, I'm here uh, wearing my official chairman of the board hat. Um, as Jen's noted, this is her last Sunday and then she's moving on to work at a hospice. Um, I'm trying not to take this personally. This is the second time I've been chair of the board and second time the minister has left. Um, so, you know, at, at some point in the future, I will step down as chair and then I, you know, probably the, as the way the rotation works, I'll be back as chair. So just please, if I come back as chair again, please don't expect the minister to leave. I don't want to make this a habit. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the board uh, and the congregation, thanks to Jen for helping us through the last five years. They have not been easy five years. Um, both for us as a congregation and both and personally for Jen, um, but we've made it through this together. So I just wanted to wish Jen uh, good luck on her next adventures. I'm sure they will be fun. Um, and uh, we will look forward to the path forward. Um, I just, I did have a, we have a path forward we've chosen um, in terms of identifying you know, who our next short-term minister is going to be while we figure things out. Challenge is um, the upper levels of the United Church of Canada don't seem to be united. Um, seems a bit of a challenge of left hand, not knowing what the right hand is doing. Um, shorts, long story short, we can't technically hire somebody until they say we can, but they won't return our phone calls. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, there will be somebody here next week in a short-term pulpit supply for the next few weeks at least. Um, at the end of the month will be our annual meeting, and after that we hope to have a name that we can share with you of someone who will be here. Uh, God has a path forward for us. We just would like the United Church of Canada to be along with us for the ride. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Otherwise, uh, I guess, enjoy Jen's final service. Thanks, Neil. Uh, are there any other community announcements, maybe from online? Did anything come through online? Not seeing anything, Jen. All right. Well, then let us open in prayer. Let's pray. Comforting God, comforting God of companionship and compassion. We appeal to you today as we prepare our hearts and our minds to bid farewell as minister and congregation embark on different paths. By your mystery, your presence companions us both, and we ask that you guide us as we travel on, in separate directions, but still in one same spirit, your spirit, gracious God. Steady us and strengthen us, we pray, that we each continue in your steadfast in our steadfast journey and in your name, now and forever. Amen. And so let us really lift our voices together and sing our opening hymn, which comes from Voices United, number 602, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Thank you, Melissa.
seated. As Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. A peace the world cannot give. May the peace of Christ be with you. So we have learned during COVID to share the peace using sign language. And because we have some faces in the congregation today that uh, may not uh, have had uh, abundance of practice, uh, let us uh, practice how we pass sharing the peace using sign language. And then we will take a few minutes to share the peace with one another in any way that feels comfortable. Uh, for us. So the sign for peace looks like this. We put our hands together and we motion back and forth and down like this. And that is the sign for peace. And then to be with, uh, we put our fists together with our thumbs up, be with, and then you. Uh, and the response to wise uh, with our hands and we motion back and forth and also with you. So we'll try that one more time. Peace be with you and also with you. Whether we shake hands, hug, uh, give a peace sign, or share the peace using sign language, let us share the peace of Christ with each other. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, have a seat. You have some there, Jen. Uh, yep, there's Brendan and Jamie. Everybody say hi to Brendan and Jamie. Good morning, how are you doing? I love your PJs. You know what? One thing about my new, uh, my new job is that I get to stay in my PJs on Sunday mornings for a while. So I'm pretty excited about that. Well, I have a storybook for us today. And uh, this story is called The Invisible String. So it's written by uh, Patrice Karst and illustrated by Jeff Stevenson. And it's been dedicated to all the children of the world and their magical strings. I wonder what that's gonna be about. Let's see, and it goes like this. Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one night and it was quiet. But suddenly, it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. But we want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know that we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. Well, Mom held something out right in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what Mom was holding I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. Well, you don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? Asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our heart, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string, Liza asked. Sure she does, said Mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Liza. Best friends too. How far 
can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean, asked Jeremy. Yep, Mom said, even there. There's Jeremy deep down in the ocean. Or, 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 a, or a mountain climber, even on top of a mountain? Yep, Mom said, even there. A ballerina in France? Yep, even there. A jungle explorer? Even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said Mom. Love is stronger than anger, and as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. And look, she's got her hand in the cookie jar. She must have got trouble for that. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like what movie to see or what game to play in the back seat or what time to go to bed, oh, that's right, you two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings their friends have and their friends have and their friends have until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they could now see clearly all the ways they were connected with all of their friends and all of the ones that loved them. And no one is ever alone. The end. How did you like that story? I really like that story. What was your favorite part about that story? Yeah, yeah, when, when they asked about who can be on the other side of the string and mommy said everyone. Yeah, that was a great part. And my favorite part was that when we think about these invisible strings, uh, we actually have a name for it, we call it love. Right? And when we love and when we're loved, we can never be alone because we're always connected. And do you know who else talks about love a lot? Jesus! <laughs> Jesus talks about love a lot. And one of the things that we have um, as a community is the love of Jesus. That keeps us connected no matter where we are. And so I am reminded of the song that my grandma always used to sing to me when I was your age. She always used to sing, Jesus loves me. So will you sing with me today one last time? Hit it, Nance. We can see the words come up over there on the screen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong.
sitting with me. I will uh, remember fondly all of the time that we spent together. I will miss you all. And if you think about me and you miss me, just remember that I love you. And so in that way, we are always connected. Sound good? Then let us pray. Thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus in our lives, that we can always know that we are loved and that that love transcends space and time so that even when we're apart, we are never really alone. Amen. Thank you so much for letting me share some of, uh, for, for sharing your life with me uh, over the last six years. And uh, we'll just say, see you later. It has. It's crazy, eh? It's been six, yeah, including my internship. Bye for now. We'll see you at the end. Delaney, did you make a cake today? Yes. Delaney makes the best cake in the world. Uh, and I believe we have Bob Cooney reading our scripture for us today. And Bob, um, due to the storm, is coming in from online. So I'll turn that over to you now, Bob. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his, disciple, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who were persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bob. And so let us sing. Uh, from Voices United, number 896, blessed are they.
Thank you. Please be seated. On Tuesday, uh, January 17th, 2023, I announced my resignation as the minister of Emmanuel United Church. And today marks my last day and our last time of worship together as minister and congregation. We have often talked about the cyclical cycle of the Christ story and the seasons that form the foundations of our communal life together. There is a season for all things under heaven, and we learn this by observing nature, and we feel it when things change. As I sat down to write this week, I became profoundly aware of the impact my season with Emmanuel has had on my life journey. I came to Emmanuel as an intern on September 4th, 2016, and began the position as the called minister on the 4th of July, 2017. For a little more than six years, we have lived out the life of Christ together. Together, we embarked on a journey and I remain incredibly grateful for the ways that I have felt supported during our time together. And I truly hope that you have felt supported and upheld in ways that are meaningful for you as well. We've had some fun, some challenges, and we've endured, cha endured changes together. Just as I was coming on board, Vera's place was getting underway and seeing its first guests move in. Uh, Waterloo Wayside would see a transition of leadership as it lived deeper into its mission to serve the wider community. And we supported each other through budget deficits and hate crimes and spray paint on the church. And just as things were starting to settle, a global pandemic would define our lives inside and outside the church for the next three years. And through it all, the Emmanuel community rallied in true spirit, a true spirit of grit to persevere in the name of love. This spirit of perseverance will always be one of the best qualities in Christ that this community has achieved. Over the last six years, I have learned the true meaning of connection as I was embraced by this community. I have been given the gift of serving the least among us, and this is a gift that I recommend that everyone needs to experience. I have been afforded the opportunities to bear witness to life's deepest transitions from weddings to funerals to baptisms to confirmations and communions, and these life passages have taught me so much about the true meaning of life and love that I feel incredibly rich for experiencing them. Everything I have learned here at Emmanuel will help me along my journey going forward. And I can only hope that I am also leaving you with new and interesting ways to think about your life together and that you too will feel improved for our having been together. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. And this is a season for uprooting, a season of change and transition. And although these can be scary words, our Jesus story, the cycle of Christ reminds us that it is in our end that we find our beginning. Although we are at an ending here in our relationship as minister and congregation, we are also, once again, at a beginning. Not only are we, myself and you as the congregation, at a new beginning, so is our Christ story. One of the very first teachings that Jesus ever uttered was the Beatitudes, the text that we just heard Bob read. 
The word beatitude comes from the Latin word beatus, which means blessed. The context of the word as the people understood it anciently was blessed in terms of material wealth and prosperity. Basically, you were blessed if you were rich with money. So the first thing that Jesus teaches his followers is that in God's world, blessed means something entirely different. Blessed is not so much a physical reality of wealth, but rather an emotional reality, a psychosocial experience based on spiritual condition. And you and me, we are blessed. We are blessed because we have had the opportunity to develop and grow spiritually with each other over the last six years. I feel incredibly blessed by the spiritual riches the Emmanuel community has bestowed upon me. And I truly hope that I have blessed you with new riches as well. Blessed are we because we know community. The book of Hebrews teaches us, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially that, that that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We shall continue in the same spirit to run the race, that God has set before us. Blessed are we who see God in each other. When the Apostle Paul wrote to his congregations, his most fervent message was to remain unified in Christ and to allow the seasons and cycles and circumstances to bring them closer together. For Christ cannot be divided, but rather becomes whole when diversity is sought, brought, and included into the body of Christ. And although we embark on separate paths, we do so in the same spirit. For when we are living into our sense of God, we cannot be divided. We will still live on together in the same spirit. Blessed are we who know that we are one. And Paul assures us, since we have been made righteous through Jesus' faithfulness, we have peace with God. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through Christ and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And this hope does not put us to shame because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Blessed are we because we know perseverance. So go forward, Emmanuel, in your spirit of persistence, taking pride in any problems that arise because the character of your endurance will produce hope. And so I say to you as my final message, stay steadfast in your endurance, and you shall know peace and be always blessed. Amen. And so we sing. Voices United, number 703, in the bulb, there is a flower. In the bowl there is a flower in 
And friends, let us pray. Creator God, as we consider our spiritual condition today, let us not be tripped up by lingering pandemic and economic instability, social isolation, injustice, and circumstance, but enter our hearts and minds in ways that are unique to each of us. Speak to us in ways that we will understand. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see that which we can be grateful for. And remind us that we are blessed by this community of friends and family, earth and sky. Remind us that we can be thankful for those who sacrifice to help others. Thank you for the seasons and all the changes that each season brings. And thank you for the opportunities we each now have to live your love in new ways. God of hope, sustain us in the coming days ahead. Stabilize us and uphold us and see us through. Guide our hearts as we experience a different rhythm. And may your presence of perseverance and endurance continue to uphold the Emmanuel congregation. And may the love that lives here spill even further out into the streets so that all may know that there is refuge here. Let us take a moment to pray our own prayers that are on our hearts and minds in this moment. Let us hold a moment together. And the Emmanuel community is currently holding in prayer Jennifer Lloyd Smith, who has recently been hospitalized. The Hounsell family, as Bob Hounsell has passed. Leslie Litwiler and family and their grief. And the Rule family and their trauma. And Paul Dixon and Doris Lemon in their companionship. Loving God, we trust in you together as your people. And so we pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray. For God is to all of us like our mother and our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is in the giving and receiving of our gifts that we experience abundant life. Let us offer our gifts freely this morning, stepping out in faith down the road of grace 
We do this together as your people called and sent to be a blessing for the world. With gratitude for the sacred labors of love in this place, let our bring our offerings to God and to one another, for we are blessed in many ways. As we sing our offertory this morning, all the ways that you can continue to support the Emmanuel community and its outreach programs will be on your screens. Offering plates will make their way around and we can even now take your offerings electronically at the back. So let us sing together our offertory and our offering will now be received. Sixteen. that one out of the fire there. I forgot that on the offertory we don't put the, uh, the hymn uh, on the screen. So anyway, let us pray. <laughs> For the gifts that we have received and will receive, we give thanks. May the giving of ourselves transform the Emmanuel community into a shining beacon of hope for all to find. Amen. Well, I hope that the uh, folks in our digital space have had an opportunity to make some provisions of bread and juice um, uh, for yourselves this morning. But please know, even if you are not able to have the physical elements present, you remain a part of Christ's communion through love. Let us give thanks 
together. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Holy mystery that is holy love is beyond complete knowledge and above perfect description. Source of life, living word, and bond of love is creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in God. Even when we turn away, we are assured that you are with us. God's presence never fails us, and divine gifts of hope and new life transform us. We praise the Creator for Jesus the Christ, eternal as your love, our bond to one another. We rejoice with all your people every time and of every place, and with the saints and the angels alike, proclaiming, the glory of God's name. Let us remain seated, but recite together our new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And our communion hymn is for, uh, Voices United, number 469. We gather here. Come, share the Lord. died, he gathered with his friends 
and with his companions. And in the midst of uncertainty, they found each other at a table connecting over the story of God and flashed among them. As he did this, he took bread. He raised it. He gave thanks. He blessed it. And he broke it. And he shared it with all of his disciples, saying, This is my body, which I offer up to you. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He raised it. He gave thanks. He blessed it. And he shared it with his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant a covenant built not upon law and tradition, but rather upon the foundation of love. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, renewer of life, settle on these gifts and all who gather here that we might be transformed in our remembrance of your radical love, your eternal embrace, and your grace that makes all things new. For the sake of our shared lives, nourish us and renew our hope that soon love will rise again among us. And so now let us share together in the mystery of our faith. Take into your hands your bread. Take it and eat it, for it shall nourish your strength. And now take into your hands the cup, take it and drink it, for it is the fruit of the vine, and it shall nourish your soul. For the gift of grace that we have received here today, we give thanks. For the ways that God creates possibilities in the midst of the impossible, and for the mystery we are called into, we give thanks. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, to forgive as we have been forgiven, and to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join our voices together one last time and sing our closing hymn, Voices United, number 558, we gather here to bid farewell.
experience a new beginning. Behold, God is making all things new, and for that we are blessed. God blesses you, God keeps you, God's face is forever shining upon you, and it is for this reason that the peace of Christ is with us all. Amen.